apart from being irrelevant uh, in terms of our, our skills or our knowledge, what are the other risks of ignoring data and ignoring digital transformation for government and public sector? Well, I think being uh, being irrelevant is that's quite an existential question, isn't it? Uh, I'm irrelevant, Sonny. But the, the point is that we can see that uh, rapidly we as individuals have less to contribute in the meetings in the office uh, when we're talking to people out and about if we're not aware what is going on in the world, how rapidly COVID has accelerated the, the march to digitization. We've given a few little examples already. I think for um, for the, the risks of, of um, not getting up to speed, uh, it, it may seem a strange thing to say, but if you have the knowledge and if you're using data, uh, you are you're de-risking potential mistakes that you make otherwise. And I'll give you an example. It may seem logical if you're launching a new website or a new app to base that on what the people in your office, in your department think you should put in there. But I would strongly urge you to do the opposite. Get outside and talk to people. Talk to people about what they want. Talk to people about what their pain points are. I'll give you an example of a very successful Irish entrepreneur uh, who I've, I've had the good fortune to meet, who runs a business. It's a greeting card app. And the idea is you can set up and get a reminder to send your loved one a greeting card. The business is very successful because at the heart is the customer and the entrepreneur in question um, made a, a conscious effort to bring in a group of customers into his office every week and give them tea and give them cakes and just get them talking. And what he revealed very quickly was all sorts of fascinating things about what price point they would pay for their greeting card, about how many greeting cards they would buy if it was an easy thing to do on a smartphone instead of having to go onto a complicated website. And indeed, the very terminology and the words used on the website and in the app and as a result, by bringing them in on a regular basis and getting that feedback, he could massively de-risk building a website which his developer thought he wanted and instead build the website that the customer wanted. And I think there's no substitute for taking this outside in approach, listening very carefully to the customer, to their pain points and frustrations, and realizing that maybe a very small change here or there could have a disproportionate change on behavior. And that's the advantage in listening to the customer and bringing them into what you're doing. And I think having the skills to do that are pretty critical.